Imagine somebody who constantly throughout the day kept on eating and nibbling, never stopping every 5, 10, 20 minutes eating something. How unhealthy would this person become? Obese, overload of the system. That's not the way Allah created us. We need gaps. We need time to eat and time to not eat. Just like the body also needs its time to not eat, so too the soul needs time that it is not interacting with the dunya. In our journey towards cleansing the soul, one of the tips that the Quran and Sunnah hints at and our scholars are explicit at is cutting off from the world for a period of time, of not being involved in the dunya and spending some quality time alone by yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the Quran and Sunnah hinting at it, a number of verses and a hadith are mentioned that we can derive this from. Of them, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who they have the khashya of Allah in ghaib, in secrecy. And one of the interpretations, when nobody is watching them, when nobody is looking at them, that is when their khashya, when their khushur, when their taqwa becomes the most manifest. And our Prophet ﷺ said, whoever amongst you can have secret deeds that no one knows about, let him have those secret deeds. Have some deeds between you and Allah that nobody else knows about. And in fact, the concept of i'tikaf even, that you cut off from the dunya, you cut off from your friends, you cut off from your work, and you just sit in the masjid and you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is of the mechanisms to attain tazkiyah. Subhanallah, this world we live in, the hustle and bustle, the stress, the constant noise. We don't even have time to just allow our souls to be comforted in dhikr and ibadah. Constantly surrounded by our cell phones, our family, our job, you know, the dunya, dunya, dunya. Well, you have to make time for tazkiyah. Now the sunnah is to make time within your daily routine. It is not sunnah to cut off from the world and go live in a cave. That's not our sharia. Our Prophet ﷺ said, there is no being monks or hermits in Islam. We don't cut off from the dunya. But throughout the day and night, what is the routine of the Prophet ﷺ? He would pray tahajjud all alone. And then after Salat al-Fajr, he would go and he would do adhkar all alone. Throughout the day and night, you put in private time, quality time. And by the way, quality time doesn't mean you on your phone. No, you put your phone off. When you are worshipping Allah in the privacy of secrecy, that is when your tazkiyah begins to develop. When you only worship Allah in public, that's not healthy. And the Quran and Sunnah advise us to worship Allah in secret. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises Salat al-Tahajjud when nobody else is watching. Allah azza wa jal says, Inna nashi'ata layli hiya ashaddu wata'an wa aqwa muqila. That praying at the night when nobody is watching you وَبِلْ أَسْحَارِهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ When it is all dark, that's when they're doing istighfar. So Allah says, praying at night, أَقْوَمُ وَأَشَدُّ It is the most strongest. It's going to give you the most iman and taqwa. When nobody's watching and you stand up and pray, that will fortify you like nothing else will. And our Prophet wasallam said, the most beloved prayer to Allah is that which he does in the middle of the night. فِي الليل, that is the most beloved prayer to Allah. In another hadith, he said, the prayer that the person does in his house is better than any prayer except for the Fadd prayer. Away from the eyes of men, you are praying alone. Nobody's watching you except the Fadd. You should pray in the masjid. Other than that, the most blessed prayer is the prayer that you do all alone. The same goes for Sadaqah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in tubdu sadaqati fa ni'immahi. If you give Sadaqah publicly, good. Wa in tukhfuha. And if you hide it and you give it to those who are deserving, fa huwa khayrun lakum. It is better for you. Secret Sadaqah is better for you. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that on the day of judgment, seven will be sheltered when there is no shelter other than the shelter of Allah. One of them was what? A person who was all alone. Nobody was watching him and he became overcame with emotion and he started cry from the fearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His emotions got the better of him and he began to cry out of thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, like I said, the sunnah of the Prophet sallam, you are busy during times of the day and then you are absolutely alone when nobody is watching you. It is not the sunnah to break off from the society and not interact with people.
Prophet, the Prophet ﷺ said, the believer who interacts with the others and is patient at the negatives is more beloved to Allah than the believer who cuts off out of fear of avoiding the negative. We interact with the believers. We're a part of society. We go to work. But throughout our 24 hours, we schedule private time, alone time, and especially at night. During this alone time, Ibn al-Jawzi mentions that of the methodologies of coming close to Allah is you have khalwa with Allah Azza wa Jal. You are alone with Allah Azza wa Jal. And he said, this is one of the greatest mechanisms of attaining tadabbur and tazkiyah. What should you do when you're alone? Four things. Number one, the ibadah of the qalb. That is tawbah, returning back to Allah, repentance, feeling guilty. So ibadah of the qalb. Number two, the ibadah of the mind. What is the ibadah of the mind? Tadabbur, tafakkur. You think about the blessings Allah has given you. You recall the favors Allah has done unto you. You recall your own shortcomings. You recall your purpose in life. You need to just cut off from the world and think about what are you doing here? What is your purpose? What is your goal? That is the ibadah of the mind. Number three, ibadah of the tongue. Ibadah of the tongue is of course dhikr and dua and Quran. All of these are ibadah of the tongue. And number four, ibadah of the body. And that is salah. And that is zakah. And that is sadaqah. And that is helping people when nobody knows you help them except for you. And this is the way of the salaf of the righteous ancestors that they would help people in the darkness of the night. Umar ibn al-Khattab in the middle of the night would carry sacks on his back and hand it to people that he knew needed it. Nobody knew who he was except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you worship Allah and nobody is watching you, you are proving to Allah that you are sincere. You are proving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm not doing this for show. Therefore, to summarize, as Qatada said, no person shall attain the sweetness of worship until he attains it when he cuts off and he worships Allah alone. My advice to myself and all of you on your journey to purify your soul is to schedule private time, alone time, to schedule time where you just sit and you literally shut off your cell phone away from your family and friends and you just make ibadah, tadabbur, tafakkur, worship of the heart, cleansing of what is in there. And this should be, if not daily, put it in a few times a week or a few times of the month. As for our Prophet he did it daily and especially nightly. Assalamu alaikum. Islamic Motivation, Dinjon and Dinjon Bangla is our official channel. Visit our description box and pin command to buy some Islamic products. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Islamic Motivation, Dinjon and Dinjon Bangla is our official channel. Visit our description box and pin command to buy some Islamic products. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Islamic Motivation, Dinjon and Dinjon Bangla is our official channel. Visit our description box and pin command to buy some Islamic products. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Islamic Motivation, Dinjon and Dinjon Bangla is our official channel. Visit our description box and pin command to buy some Islamic products. Thank you.